International Soccer Preview, we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 20, the 2023 African Cup. This episode is looking at the players of Mauritania. Here we go. Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is a continuation of Series 20 on the 2023 African Cup to be played in 2024. Uh, we have done a full and uh, short version on the groups and teams and are now looking at the players of each team, uh, this episode covering Mauritania's players. Uh, we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one here is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. And we think that'll be in early January. At that time, we'll go back over the list that we compiled today and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover a few other things that I'll talk about at the end of this media cast. Uh, we did do a media cast on the players of Mauritania going into the 2021 African Cup, that taking place in January 2022. So check the show notes for that. Uh, that provided biographies on the candidates in uh, some detail. And since a lot of that is still relevant, we've decided not to commit ourselves to full player media casts for every uh, two years for the African region. So we're going to be treating this one as more of an update. Uh, in that series, uh, we were able to show who made it and who didn't make it to the final squad, but we could only go as far as predicting the starters. So here we'll begin with the list we compiled for the previous cup. Uh, we'll review who made the squad and update it by saying who the starters were. Uh, then we'll turn our attention to 2023 or the upcoming tournament and up the, update the players based on their participation over the past two years. We'll thus emerge with a new list of players for the uh, uh, upcoming tournament and uh, their likelihood of making the squad. Uh, also, we're going to put a few players in the spotlight. Uh, these will only be the players who were not covered in the media cast for the previous cup and who have a good chance of starting. So any main players that we don't put in the spotlight or give biographical information on here were covered in the media cast for the 2021 cup. And actually, that'll be most of the players. And the information in the previous media cast is not too outdated. Uh, so again, we refer you to the link in the show notes. And then for fun, we're going to finish with our early predictions of starters, and we'll let you know what to expect in part two uh, of the media cast. We have made a separate video on what we'll be covering over the next nine months. YouTube watchers can see the link to that on the screen right here, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. Uh, in short, we've just completed our series on the groups and teams for the uh, 2023 Asian Cup, as well as part one of the Players Podcast for all 24 teams there. And now we're focused on the 2023 African Cup. Uh, actually, we've done the groups and teams for uh, that too, and are currently working on the players, as you see. Uh, both of those tournaments take place in early uh, 2024. And um, the other thing we've done is started coverage for World Cup 2026 qualifying, which we'll turn our attention to uh, after these tournaments. Let's begin then. So in uh, section two here, we are going to compile a list of candidates and we'll begin by uh, looking at what existed back in the previous cup. So the manager uh, going into that cup was uh, Didier Gomez de Rosa, his name is highlighted in green there because we, uh, when we compiled our list, didn't think he would get fired before the tournament, and indeed he wasn't. Um, he uh, led the team through the 2023, uh, sorry, through the 2022 um, African Cup there. And uh, yeah, a bit of confusion with the titles. I don't want to say the African, the 2021 African Cup played in January of 2022 every time I mention it. So I might say the previous cup, or if I say the 2021 Cup or 2022 Cup, uh, it will be referring to the same thing. 
Um, okay, so he remained with the team uh, until 2022 and has since moved on. He's coached a uh, team in Jordan and in Saudi Arabia, two teams in Saudi Arabia uh, since, and is now manager of uh, the Botswana uh, national team since 2023. Uh, incoming, um, so we'll actually remove him from the list here uh, because the new manager is Amir Abdu. Uh, so we will put the spotlight on him because he's new. Um, he was born in France, although uh, one source says he was born in Comoros. He's a citizen of both countries. And uh, not a lot of experience. He was the manager of a small team in France called Golfec. Uh, in 2012 and 20, uh, from 2012 to 2014. And then uh, probably the biggest team in no um, Mauritania, uh, Nuadhibu, in 2020 and 21. Uh, so a big gap between those two positions. Uh, manager of uh, Comoros natural, uh, national team actually filling that gap. It was from 2014 to 2022. So he actually managed uh, the Mauritanian team and the Comoros national team at the same time. Uh, so he took them through the 2021 African Cup and is now with the Mauritanian national team since 2022. So Amir Abdu uh, will be leading them through this cup. Uh, okay, and um, let's go back to the goalkeepers for the previous tournament. We had uh, Babacar Diop as a definite candidate and uh, Namori Dior as a likely candidate. And um, we did have one uh, candidate who seemed to be off the squad. squad. Uh, we're not going to mention those unless they kind of reappear, and he did not. However, when the uh, squad list came out, kind of as we expected, uh, we found a couple of new candidates because they were uh, short on candidates here. So two new candidates there, Mbake uh, Ndaye and Mohamed El Mokhtar. Um, uh, both added to the list. So let's see what became of those players. Oh, uh, one more detail to mention there. We predicted uh, Babacar Diop as the starter there, which wasn't um, wasn't uh, all that brave of us. It, it was pretty obvious. Um, and I'm just going to remove the highlight from his uh, name as we compile the list for the new cup here. Um, Babacar Diop... Um, uh, sorry, uh, was the starter. He started and finished uh, all except game three, uh, which he did start, but he was subbed out injured and replaced by the backup keeper uh, Mbake Ndaye. So it turned out that he seemed to be the second string keeper uh, there. Uh, Babacar Diop um, had since um, started uh, just those three cups of the game uh, of the uh, African Cup and was otherwise only on the bench for five uh, and not selected for nine matches. However, he was on the bench for the last two matches. Um, and so we uh, have him as a possible candidate going into this cup. Uh, the next candidate on our list had been Namori Dior. And um, Namori Dia was selected for the squad, uh, but he was uh, on the roster but saw no action. So, uh, in truth, we did expect him to be the uh, backup keeper, but he wasn't. Um, after the Cup, he was uh, off the squad for a while and returned after a 16-month absence in March 2023 and started one of their remaining 10 games uh, and was on the bench for seven and not selected for two others. So uh, kind of back in the squad here, and we uh, have uh, Namori Dior as a likely candidate uh, for this tournament as well. Let's look at the new candidates. Um, Ndaye, uh, sorry, Mbake, uh, Mbake, Mbake Ndaye uh, was selected for the squad. He was one of the new candidates that were added. So we changed his name uh, from... Um, well, I used orange here for newcomers to black because he was selected for a tournament. And we're going to move him to the portable level uh, because even though uh, he seemed the second string keeper and uh, appeared briefly in the cup for about 10 minutes there, um, he didn't start any of their uh, 17 senior games. And just let me define that. Uh, we didn't include African Nations Championship games uh, in our 
analysis of participation. That's because only players who um, are based in Africa are eligible to play in that tournament. So since a lot of them are not, uh, we didn't um, include those games here. So, uh, and I didn't start any of their games, but was subbed in for one. Uh, that was in the cup, on the bench for nine, and not selected for seven others, including the last three matches. So, in short, uh, he was a regular until he was not selected for the last three. Uh, so that put a, put a bit of doubt in our mind, and uh, we have now Mbake and Daye as, the, as a possible candidate for the cup. Um, the other new candidate, Mohamed El Mokhtar, his name also changes to a black script because uh, he was selected for the cup. Um, he was on, uh, on the roster, but actually not even on the bench for any of the three games. The situation back in the previous cup was they were allowed to bring 28 players uh, because of COVID uh, concerns. Um, but they could still only bring 23 players up to the bench. So they brought four goalkeepers to the tournament. And it looks like El Mokhtar, El Mokhtar was the fourth one and not even brought up to the bench. And he has not appeared for the national team since the 2021 African Cup. He's just 21 years old, so may come back into the future. But uh, uh, may come back in the future. Uh, but we're going to remove him from the list here because he seems uh, a bit far from uh, making the squad. And one of the reasons he's a bit far is because we have a, a new goalkeeper to introduce at the definite level uh, here. And so we're going to put this player in the spotlight because he seems to be a starter. So the name is uh, Babakar Nias. And uh, Babakar Nias got his first cap shortly after the cup in March of 2022 and started 12 of their remaining 14 games, uh, two matches there that he wasn't selected for. So um, uh, Babakar Nias is uh, 27 years old and plays for Green Camp in France. Um, and he also played for Tondela in Portugal from 2019 to 2023. He came out of the uh, Aspire Academy um, in Qatar there, uh, the famous Aspire Academy. And one of the uh, kind of conduits uh, into Europe through the Aspire Academy is Eupen in Belgium. And he did uh, play for them before moving to Portugal. Um, so he was actually born in Senegal by the Carnias, uh, but is playing for uh, Mauritania, looking like the starting keeper uh, now. Um, but we'll talk about that uh uh, at the end of the podcast when we do the spotlight review. Uh, so let's uh, summarize the candidates. We have Bubakar Nias then, the newcomer as a definite candidate, Namori Dior as a likely candidate, and two possible candidates in Babakar Diop and Mbake Ndaye. And then we will finish by summarizing the position in a bit of a narrative. So as we saw, it was uh, Babakar Diop in all three games of the cup, but um, it was um, newcomer Babakar Nias who took over after playing five of the six African Cup qualifying games that got them to this tournament. And the one game he was absent for, Namori Dior stepped in for, so we consider him the backup keeper. And Nias continued to start in both World Cup qualification games in November of this year. Uh, 2023. So, um, uh, as we said, uh, Nias seems the starter, Dior seems the second string keeper, but number three seems a bit of a battle between our two possible candidates, Dior and then Daye. It'll be interesting to see which one of those is brought to the cup. Uh, okay, let's move on to the defenders and the central defenders. So we'll look at the list we had uh, back in the previous cup. And we had Bakari Ndaye as a definite candidate. And then four likely candidates, uh, Abdul Ba, uh, Abdallahi Mahmoud, um, Diadi Diara, and El Hassan Hubeib. And then we had one possible candidate in Umar Mangane. Um, and that is it. Uh, we had one player who seemed to be off the squad, but we're not going to add him because he's not 
uh, appeared since. Uh, among those players, um, I think we actually selected the starters after we saw um, the final selections because um, we didn't uh, nominate Bakary and Daye as a starter. We nominated the two likely candidates, Abdul Ba and uh, Abdallahi Mahmoud. Uh, as the starters, we'll see if they actually did start. But we begin with uh, a bit of a surprise. Our definite candidate, uh, Bakary Ndaye, um, was not selected for the cup. Uh, he was selected for the 30-man preliminary squad and didn't make the cup to 28 players. So uh, he had seemed a fixture in the squad uh, prior to the competition. Um, but surprisingly wasn't selected. He did actually return after an almost two-year absence just recently in November 2023 and started one of the two remaining games and was on the bench for the one other. So perhaps Ndaye is making a comeback um, to the squad. Uh, he has actually in his club play moved from a club in uh, Mauritania to a couple of clubs in Iraq. Uh, interestingly, and uh, Bakary and Daye uh, moving now from a definite candidate down to a possible candidate. Let's look at the two likely players that we uh, predicted as starters, beginning with Abdul Ba. And um, wow, I have a really long list here, uh, so I got to find him on the list. Uh, he was uh, not a starter in the Cup, uh, despite being captain of the team. Um, he was on the roster but didn't see any action, uh, not even on the bench for Game 3. And uh, not only that, but he has not appeared for the national team since the African Cup there uh, in January 2022. So uh, we were dead wrong on that one. Um, Furthermore, uh, he's unlikely to uh, make it to the team because uh, he's unattached to a club since uh, leaving his club in Kosovo in 2022. Uh, he's only 29 years old, so I don't think he's moving into retirement, but Abdul Ba uh, seeming quite away from the squad uh, now. And because he's unattached, we're going to remove him from the list altogether because we think um, there's no chance of him uh, making this squad. Wow. Uh, okay, let's see how we did with our other prediction, Abdullahi Mahmoud. So um, he was selected and started the first game. Yay, we were right, but he uh, lost his starting position after game one. Oh, uh, and never reappeared, uh, not even on the bench for game two. So uh, we can't claim much in terms of uh, a good prediction there. Um, but we actually are going to uh, defer talking about him because he lined up as a left midfielder uh, in his single start. And uh, he has since been recoded as a central midfielder. So um, we're going to um, remove him from the list here, uh, but he will reappear uh, when we get to uh, the central midfield there. Okay, we had two other likely candidates, uh, Diadi Diara. And um, he was, uh, sorry, he was uh, selected for the squad. Uh, he was on the roster but saw no action, though. He was on the bench for all three games and has not appeared for the national team since. So, uh, Dia Di Diara, um, I would say, off the squad here. Uh, the fourth likely candidate was El Hassin Hubeib, and uh, he um, was selected also for the squad, and he was a starter in games one and two, at least, but uh, not even on the bench for game three. Uh, he has continued with the squad, though, starting seven of their 17 games over the past two years, uh, on the bench for four, and uh, not selected for six others. So uh, we have him as a likely candidate, maybe a possible candidate, having uh, not been selected for six matches, but I'll start. I'll stick with what I prepared and, and uh, consider him a likely candidate, uh, just as he was in the previous cup. Uh, we also had a possible candidate in Umar Mangane. And um, let's see what became of him. He, uh, I have so many names here that it's hard to find. Okay, Umar Mangane, not selected for the cup and uh, has not been called up since. So his last appearance for the team uh, was in December 2021, shortly before the African Cup, uh, in the Arab Cup. So he also is uh, removed from the list here. 
Uh, but we do have a few candidates to add um, uh, who are new to the squad. Uh, the first uh, two are at the likely level, so that is Nu Mohammed Al Abd, uh, and um, we'll get to the next one after we talk about El Abd. Uh, he was uh, got his first appearance on the bench in September 2022 and started three of their remaining 10 games and was on the bench for five, so just two matches that he was not selected for. Uh, um, so we're not going to put him in the spotlight. Uh, we don't necessarily think he's going to be uh, a starter, but he is a likely candidate uh, here. Uh, the other one is uh, Damini uh, Sa uh, Salak. Uh, also a likely candidate, got his first appearance uh, just like El Abd on the bench in September 2022 and uh, didn't start any of their remaining games but was subbed in for two and on the bench for six. So just like El Abd, just two matches that he was not selected for and if there aren't enough parallels between the two already, uh, they both play for the same team in, in um, Mauritania, the one we mentioned earlier, Nua Debo. Uh, in Mauritania. So uh, both of those guys actually came out of the African Nations Championship um, games, which they're eligible for because they're based in Africa and um, and carried on with the uh, kind of the senior team there. Uh, anyway, if uh, Salak does make it to the cup, uh, we think he would be a substitute, even though he's a definite candidate. Uh, okay, moving down the list, we have a couple of possible candidates. Uh, Lasana Diakabi at the possible level. Uh, he got his first cap in March 2023 and started one of their remaining eight games, as well as subbing in for two and being on the bench for one. However, he was not uh, selected for the last three matches, so uh, almost at the unlikely level for Lasana Diakabi. And Lamine Ba, um, I think uh, okay, well, hang on. Um, Lamin Ba got his first cap also in March 2023. He, though, started six of their remaining games and was on the bench for uh, one. He uh, missed um, seven games, but three of them were due to injury, uh, two separate injuries, in fact. Uh, so um, there were four matches, though, that he was not selected for. So actually, he looked a bit more likely than... Uh, Lasana Diakabi, and uh, we'll just move him ahead on the list there. And uh, finally, we have one character at the possible but unlikely level. That's Birama Ndoi, and uh, he has not been selected for the last six matches, uh, so we won't really talk about him much. Wow, so there we go. A lot of players to juggle here in the central midfield with a lot of players coming and going. Uh, let's uh, review the list and then summarize the position. So now uh, for this tournament, we have likely candidates El Hassin Hubeib, uh, Nu Mohammed Al Abd, and uh, Damini Salek. Uh, we have three possible candidates also, Bakari Ndaye, uh, Lamin Ba, and Lasana Diakabi, and then a possible but unlikely candidate in Burama Ndoye. Uh, okay, let's uh, summarize the position then. It was a three-man central defense in the first two games. Uh, uh, in the first two games, and actually, uh, despite all the candidates we had here, it was uh, the defensive midfielder uh, Yali Mohammed Delali, uh, who was flanked by Ali Abid. Uh, who's a left back, so two out of position players, and Hubib, the only one uh, coded as a um, coded as a uh, story as a central defender here. And I've just realised uh, my hesitation was because um, I should have added uh, Yali Mohammed Delahi to the list. We He, as I said, was coded as a defensive midfielder uh, in the past cup, but during the period we're talking about, he has only played as a central defender. So I'll just uh, add him to the list uh, as a possible candidate here. Um, I'll put him at the top of the possible list, even though he has drifted off the uh, team a little bit. Uh, he was selected for the African Cup and started and finished all four, all three games, uh, uh, but lining up as a central defender 
rather than the defensive midfielder he's coded at. Uh, since that time, he started uh, 10 of their 17 games uh, and was on the bench for two, but not selected for five others. And as I said, he seems to have drifted off uh, a little bit towards the end here. And uh, we have him only as a possible candidate. So I'm guessing that among those five games he missed, um, a lot of them were near the end. Uh, so, okay, let's go back then. Uh, so it was uh, Delahi flanked by uh, Ali Abid and Hubeib. Um, uh, Delahi and Obeid played in the two-man central defense, so both of them uh, out of position at that time. And then uh, Lamine Ba paired with Delahi in the first two games of African qualifying. And then uh, Barama and Doye, our possible but unlikely candidate, uh, replaced Delahi in the central defense. Uh, Hubeib and Al Abd played the last two games of African Cup qualifying. And then four different players were used in the two uh, World Cup qualifying games. Hubeib, Delahi returning, and then Bakari and Daye returning, and El Abd in the second. And if that's confusing, uh, well, it is. It's, it was uh, really actually confusing to try to... Uh, to write it down in a simple way. So um, a lot of confusion and very hard to predict who they will go with. At this point, Hubeib and El Abd seem the top candidates, and uh, but perhaps the late returning and Daye uh, will come back into the picture, or for that matter, uh, Delahi. But we really have no idea who to expect as the starters here. And uh, we'll talk about that in the spotlight review at the end. So very complex there in uh, central defense. Uh, let's move on to the left backs and see uh, the situation there. So we've already mentioned uh, our first candidate. He's at the likely level, or he was at the likely level in the previous cup, Ali Abade. And uh, along with him at the likely level, Hussein uh, Abdurrahman. We also have a possible candidate in Abdul Kader Thiam. And uh, we had one possible but unlikely candidate who has never returned. So those were our three candidates, and we'll update them. Uh, we did uh, say Ali Abed, uh, we did predict him as the starter. And um, for some reason, we had Hussein Abdurrahman as a likely starter too. So I wonder if we were thinking that uh, one of them would appear out of position. Let's see if that happened. Uh, Ali Abade started all three games there. Uh, however, he lined up as a central defender. Perhaps that's what we were thinking uh, in all three starts uh, there. Uh, since that time, Abade has started 14 of their 17 senior games. Um, and was on the bench for one and not selected for two others. So uh, we didn't see his name come up um, uh, much uh, over the past two years in central defense. So uh, he has actually gone back to uh, um, being a left back, except when they use a three-man back line. Then he may be the left uh, player in a three-man central defense. So Ali Abed uh, remains, uh, no, actually moves up from, uh, a likely candidate in the previous tournament to a definite candidate here. And um, uh, our second likely candidate was Hussein Abdurrahman. And he uh, was selected for the cup, but appeared only in game three, uh, which he started and finished. So he did get one start there. Uh, since that time, he started uh, no more, just that one game in the cup, um, and was subbed in for two and on the bench for one. Uh, but has not been selected for 13 matches, including the last seven. So almost uh, off the squad, but we will move him down to possible but unlikely uh, here. Uh, the other player, Abdul Qadir Thiam, uh, was at the possible level going into the last cup. He was selected and, to our surprise, actually a starter in games one and two, uh, lining up as the uh, left back there for those uh, two games. and um, uh, But those are the only two games he uh, started for the uh, team. Afterwards, he was on the bench for two games, but not selected for 13 others. So uh, only one appearance on the bench uh, since the Cup. 
So again, uh, we could well put him as seemingly off the squad, but uh, I have put him as possible but unlikely uh, there. And uh, that uh, kind of updates the players from the previous cup. But we do have one uh, a new player to add at the likely level, and that's Kadim Dior. So Kadim Dior, um, we're going to put in the spotlight here uh, because he may be used as a starter. He got his first appearance on the bench in September 2022 and started two of their remaining 10 games and was subbed in for three and on the bench for three, just two of those 10 matches that he wasn't uh, selected for. So uh, Dior uh, is 25 years old and he plays for uh, Al-Hilal Abdurrahman in Sudan and was with uh, Horoya in Guinea so uh, and in Senegal where he was born so he's kind of uh, traveled Africa in his club career and in fact he was uh, on the Senegal national team in 2019 and played four games uh, for them uh, but now uh, has um, thrown his loyalties towards Mauritania so uh, he's being used increasingly, and that's why we're doing the spotlight. We think he might be a starter. And uh, that leads us uh, um, towards the summary. I'll tell you why he, we think he might be a starter. But let's uh, uh, review the positions. We have definite, uh, review the candidates, I should say, definite candidate Ali Abid, uh, likely candidate Kadim Dior, and actually, I won't even mention the other two because I think they're uh, pretty far off the squad. Uh, so let's summarize the position. As we saw, Abid played central defense uh, in all games of the Cup. Uh, however, in the first two games, it was a five-man defense. So there was still a left back and a right back. Uh, and it was Thiam, uh, Abdul Qadir Thiam, who played uh, left back. And then Abdurrahman in the third game. Uh, so both of them got starts. Uh, Abid returned to the uh, left-back position for five of the six African Cup qualifying games, but now it was Dior who replaced uh, him, uh, replacing him in the other game that he missed. Um, and then in the World Cup qualifying, they each played one. Dior played the first game in November, and Abid uh, was used in the second game. And uh, not only that, but Dior replaced Abid at halftime. So that's why we're starting to think that he might be actually challenging Abid for the position. So we're still going to nominate uh, Abid, uh, Abid as the starter with Dior as the backup although Dior does seem to be making a bid for the starting role. Also, if Abid returns to central defense, then we think Dior will step into the left-back position. So uh, we think um, Dior is a possible starter. Over to the right-back position. Uh, back in the previous cup, we had a likely candidate in El Mustafa Dior and a uh, two possible candidates in Lemrebrot El Hassan and uh, Haruna Sai, or actually usually called Abu Demba Sai. Um, and um, again, I think after the squads were released, we uh, thought um, the most likely among them to be the starter was Haruna Sai, or Ab Abu Demba Sai. Uh, and, but we only highlighted him in blue because uh, we weren't uh, that confident about it. Uh, we also had a new candidate come in when the squads were released, and that is Suleimane Karamoko. So uh, we add him to the list and then see how things developed among uh, these players. Uh, El Mustafa Diar was not selected for the Cup. That was a surprise. We had him as a likely candidate. Um, and he has, uh, you know, he did appear actually briefly after the Cup, but only until March 2022 and hasn't appeared for the national team uh, since then. So El Mustafa Dior, uh, Dior uh, seemingly off the squad. We'll leave him as, a, uh, as just that, seemingly off the squad, giving him a thin sliver of chance to get back. He's actually a bit of a veteran with 50 cap. Uh, but is still only 27 years old, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him uh, come back into the picture. Um, next, we have a possible candidate, Lemrabot El-Hassan, 
and um, uh, he was not selected for the squad and his last appearance for the team was shortly before the cup in November 2021. So El Hassan removed from the list altogether here. Next we have uh, um, Abu Demba Haruna and um, he was selected for the squad. Uh, he subbed into game one and then gained a starting position um, for games two and three. And just like in 2019, he got injured uh, in game three. So uh, pretty unlucky. I'll just review that story from 2019. He suffered a horrible ankle injury uh, 53 minutes into game one uh, in that tournament here. And uh, here, after gaining a starting position, uh, 39 minutes into game three, he got injured uh, again. So Abu Demba Sai, uh, quite unlucky. And he has not appeared for the team since the uh, African Cup there. He's uh, 32 years old. And we don't expect that he will reappear because uh, um, he has been unattached uh, to any club since July 2023. So... Um, uh, that's always a bit of a death now, as I say, for uh, any player hoping to make the national team. So we're going to remove, sadly, uh, Abu Demba Sai uh, from the list. Um, okay, and then um, the last player was Suleimane Karamoko. Uh, he came in uh, just on the uh, at the end, was a new candidate for us there. And uh, he was selected for the squad. He started game one. Uh, but was subbed out at halftime and lost his starting position. So um, I'm pretty sure it was, um, yeah, uh, Abu Dembasai who replaced him there. Uh, and he has not uh, been selected since the African Cup. So um, a short career with the national team uh, for Suleiman Karamoko, who is 31 years old. And um, I don't expect we'll see him again. So uh, we're going to... Uh, remove him from the list. Actually, we should have changed his name to Black Script because he's been through a tournament. But uh, having done that, he is now off the squad. So we're really left with no candidates here at the left back position. Uh, but we do have a new candidate, and it is at the definite level. And so we will put him in the spotlight, Ibrahima Keita. So Ibrahim Keita got his first cap in March 2022, shortly after the cup there, and started 13 of their 14 games, just one match that he wasn't selected for. So um, he is just 22 years old, and he plays for one of the biggest clubs in uh, Congo DR, TP Mazembe, uh, since 2023. He did play for a team in France, a smaller team in France, uh, called uh, Bobigny in France before that and uh, was in Mauritania prior to that. So uh, Ibrahim Akita really making a mark on the national team here and uh, seems like uh, the definite, indeed the only candidate actually uh, over here as a right back. So let's uh, review the list and we just have Ibrahim Akita as a definite candidate and then uh, Al Mustafa Dior seemingly off the squad with a small chance of uh, coming back. Perhaps a bigger chance, given that there are no other candidates here. Uh, let's summarize the position. So in the cup, it was Karamoko in game one. But as we saw, he was subbed out at halftime. And Abu Demba Sai um, in the remaining two games of the cup. Neither, though, were kept on uh, after the tournament for the national team. Rather, Keita was brought in and took firm control of the position, playing all African Cup qualifying and World Cup games. So uh, we definitely think Keita will be the starter. In terms of a backup position, uh, that might open the door, as we said, for Al Mustafa Dior, or it might be a player uh, brought in out of position, maybe a central defender uh, acting as a backup in case uh, Keita gets injured. Let's move on to the midfield and begin with defensive midfielders. So going back to the uh, list we had uh, for the previous one, we've already met um, Yali Mohamed Del Del uh, Delahi. Uh, he was a definite candidate uh, back then. We'll come back to him. Uh, we had a likely candidate in uh, Almike Ndaye. And uh, two possible candidates in Casa Camera and uh, Sidi Yakub Ethmane. 
And then we had actually two possible but unlikely and one seemingly off the squad. None of those coming back into contention, so we won't add them to the list here. Uh, let's begin with um, Yali Mohamed Delahi. So we have moved him to uh, CD, uh, sorry, Central Defence there where he remains a possible candidate. If you recall, he was used a lot in the first half of the period, uh, but not in the second half. So I'll just repeat, he uh, he was a starter, and we had nominated him as a starter, uh, but not as a starter in central defense. Um, uh, so we're going to remove him from the list here because we've put him on the list as a, a possible candidate for uh, central defense. Let's move on to uh, Amilki Ndaye. We thought it was possible uh, that he would be a starter. We had him highlighted in blue. And um, let's see if we were right. He did start games one and two, uh, but was on the bench for game three there. Uh, since that cup, he has started... Uh, Two of their 17 games, actually that includes the cup games there, so the only two games he started were in the cup. He was subbed in for three and on the bench for three and not selected for nine others, including the last three matches. So Amilke and Daye, uh, we have as a possible candidate, he had been likely in the previous tournament. Uh, okay, the next one uh, was uh, possible candidate Casa Camera. And uh, he was selected for the squad. Uh, he was on the roster, but not on the bench for any of the three games uh, there and has not appeared for the national team since the previous cup. So uh, Casa Camera, um, a possible candidate, removed from the list. Uh, Sidi Yacoub uh, Ethmain was also selected and he uh, subbed into two games in the cup. Um, but he hasn't started any of their games uh, in the cup or since. Uh, however, he was subbed in for six and on the bench for two and not selected for nine matches. However, uh, that includes the last six matches. So we move uh, Sidi Yacoub Ethmain down from a possible candidate to a possible but unlikely uh, candidate for this cup. And uh, that was all the players that we had to update, but we do have several players to add to the list, and uh, two of them are at the possible level. It's Omare Gasama, and uh, he got his first cap in June 2023. He didn't start any of the six games since then, but was subbed in for three and on the bench for one, and not selected for two. So Omare Gasama, a possible candidate here. And uh, Bakari Kamara is the second one, also at the possible level. And he got his first cap in September 2022 and started three of their remaining 10 games, subbed in for one and on the bench for four. So just two of the 10 games that he wasn't selected for. So also a possible candidate here. That is uh, Bakari Kamara. Sorry, I had to pause to cough there. Uh, we have one more candidate to add to the list at the portable but unlikely level. It's Al Haji Bar. Uh, Al Haji Bar. Um, wait a minute. What happened? He was uh, no, he wasn't. Uh, uh, he got his first cap in June of 2022 and started three of their remaining games on the bench for one and not selected for eight others, including the last six matches. So um, uh, we think he's. Uh, unlikely to make the squad but uh, a bit of a chance uh, to get there okay well we are not going to summarize the position until uh, we get to the um, central midfielders and cover those and actually I think I'll also uh, review the list at that point too so let's move on directly to the central midfielders and uh, we don't actually have as many to deal with here as we do for most teams back in the previous cup we had uh, no definite or likely candidates, um, just uh, two at the portable level. And the first one was Boda Musin. Uh, Boda Musin, and the other one was uh, Gesuma Fofana. Uh, that's all we had. And we hadn't nominated either of those uh, as a starter. 
Uh, let's see what became of them. Uh, Boda Muthin was selected for the cup. He appeared only in game three, though, uh, which he started and finished. However, he's become more important to the team since, starting 12 of their 17 games over the past two years, on the bench for one, and uh, not selected for four matches. Uh, so we are moving uh, Boda Muthin up to a definite candidate uh, to make this squad. Uh, Guesuma uh, Fofana um, was selected for the Cup and actually started and finished all three games there, so we didn't predict that. And uh, he has since started 11 of the 17 games and subbed in for three and just three matches that he was not selected for. So we have him as a, uh, a likely candidate. Honestly, I don't see a lot of difference between the two of those. So I'm not sure why we have them at different levels, but we'll stick with what uh, what we prepared. Um, and uh, we also have Abdallah uh, Mahmoud. I think we moved him from a different spot um, because he uh, has been with the team and, in fact, was selected for the squad. Uh, so uh, we will put him here as a likely candidate. Oh, I, I, okay. Uh, Abdallahi Mahmoud, and um, he started game one in the African Cup, the last one, but he was subbed out at 59 and then lost his starting position, uh, didn't reappear in the Cup. However, he did reappear afterwards, starting five of their 17 games, and uh, was subbed in for eight and on the bench for two. So just two matches uh, that he was not selected for. And... Um, uh, even though we have him as a central midfielder here, he has actually played uh, more as a right attacking midfielder or even as a right forward, um, Abdallahi Mahmoud. Anyway, uh, we put him as a likely candidate. We'll keep him here uh, for the time being. And uh, those are the players on the list. So let's now go back and review the list for both defensive midfielders and central. So for defensive midfielders, possible candidate Dalmike Ndaye, Omari Gassama, and, Bara, and uh, Bakari Kamara, and uh, un possible but unlikely candidates Sidi Yakub Ethmain and El Haji Ba. And then for central midfielders, definite candidate Boda Musin, and uh, likely candidates Gwesima, uh, Gwesuma Fofana and Abdallahi Mahmoud. Okay, we're taking a big bite here, uh, kind of covering probably three positions here. Uh, sometimes it is two uh, central slash defensive midfielders, but more often it's three. Uh, in the cup, Fofana, as we saw, played all three games. Um, defensive midfielder Ndaye, uh, Almike Ndaye, started uh, two, and then three other players each played one game. So uh, we have some of the confusion here that we saw at left back with a lot of players coming in and out. One of those players uh, who played one of them was uh, Boda Musin. And it was Fofana and Boda, uh, sorry, Fofana and Musin going forward. They were the main figures in African Cup qualifying, but I'm really kind of simplifying things there because several other players came in and out. And uh, continuing uh, to simplify things, I'll just say it was the same. Uh, Fofana and Boda, um, uh, the, the main figures uh, with lots of other players kind of floating around. Uh, so as we saw, Boda and Moussin started 12 of their games and uh, Fofana started 11 uh, of their games over the period. So they really only started about two-thirds of the games uh, with some of the other players that we've mentioned uh, coming in and out. Uh, so that's as specific as we can get uh, um, in terms of um, who is populating the midfield. And so uh, once again, we see a bit of confusion, really, or a bit of uh, um, indecision, I would say, uh, in, in the candidates. Let's move on to left and right midfielders. So uh, we do have a couple of players coded as right midfielders, but these positions uh, are kind of going out of fashion, it seems. Um, with uh, basically central midfielders playing the, the, the role. I mean, the only time they're really used is in a 4-3-3 formation, which actually Mauritania does use 
quite a bit, uh, but it's still uh, it's still central midfielders who fill the roles. So for left midfielders, we uh, had no candidates back in the previous cup and no candidates here. For right midfielders, we had uh, two candidates uh, back then. So um, we had a likely candidate uh, Ismail Diakite and a possible candidate Ibrahima Koulibaly. And uh, we had nominated actually Koulibaly as the um, as a starter there and uh, again uh, that was after the uh, list came out and we found that Ismail Diakite uh, despite being our likely candidate was not selected so um, he uh, last uh, he did actually play after the cup uh, his last game was in September uh, 2022 um, however um, he has been unattached to a club since July 2023. He played for Esfaxian in Tunisia from 2021 to 2023, uh, but has not found a club since. So uh, in addition to being off the squad for a while, we think his chances uh, go down to pretty much zero, uh, given that he's not with the club. So we're going to remove uh, veteran Ismail Diakati from the list. Um, Next is uh, Ibrahim Akulabali. So he uh, was selected for the squad, but he was not the starter that we thought he was going to be. Um, he was on the roster but saw no action and was not even on the bench for game two. Uh, like the Akite, he did play after the cup, uh, but last appeared for the national team in June of uh, 2022. He's also kind of gone... Um, downwards in his club uh, affiliations. He was with uh, Le Mans in France from 2020 to 2022, but is now back uh, playing in Mauritania uh, for New Adibu, the uh, biggest club there. Uh, but that would uh, uh, be considered a step down. So he is 34 years old, Ibrahim Akulabali. And so uh, we're also going to remove him uh, from the list. We have one to add, though. Uh, that's a player who was coded as a forward, so we'll run into his name when we get to the list a bit later on. Uh, but we've moved him uh, from being coded as a forward to uh, being coded as a right midfielder primarily and a forward uh, secondarily. And it's Mohammed uh, Mohammed Suid. Um, uh, we had him as a likely candidate for the previous cup, and uh, he was selected. He was not on the bench for game one, but subbed into game two and started game three. And uh, since that time, he has started 10 of their 17 games, subbed in for three on the bench for one, and not selected for three others, including the last match. So uh, we have him as a likely candidate here. And uh, we're going to see that um, even though he does play as a right midfielder, sometimes he kind of pops up all over the field. And uh, we may need to reconsider his his uh, coding again. But anyway, as a right midfielder here. So uh, he's the only candidate then we have among right and left midfielders, Muhammad Suid at the likely level. And uh, I'll just summarize the position quickly. So Suid has played as a right midfielder because uh, sometimes they do use a three-man midfield. More often, though, it's central midfielders covering the left midfield and right midfield uh, spot when they use that formation. And as we said, Suid uh, pops up in other positions. We'll see that uh, as we go. All right, let's move to the upper quadrant of the field, uh, the upper left quadrant of the field. So even though we have left wingers uh, in the title here, it really means left wingers, left attacking midfielders, and possibly even uh, left forwards. Uh, and back in the previous cup, we had um, one uh, likely candidate, Umar Kamara. Sorry, that was a possible candidate, uh, Umar Kamara. And uh, that's all we had. And we did think that he may be a starter. So let's take a look and see. Uh, he was selected for the squad. He was subbed into game one and then gained a starting position for games two and three there. Um, and he did continue after the cup, like the ones we mentioned above, but only until June 2022. And uh, he is now uh, seemingly off the squad. So that's where we will move him to.
uh, seems to be off the squad. So uh, a slight chance of him coming back. Um, we have a new candidate here as a left winger too. That's Abu Bakari uh, Koita. And we have him at the possible level. He got his first cap right at the end of the period here in November 2023. But he did start both of their remaining games. And since he is the only candidate uh, coded as a left winger over here, we think that may uh, improve his chances. Nevertheless, we have him just as a possible candidate, so uh, we won't put him in the spotlight. We're not confident enough that he's going to be a starter. So let's summarize the position in the upper left quadrant of the field. Um, the variety of formations that Mauritania uses make this uh, position very changeable from left winger to left attacking midfield to left forward to uh, there being no position in the upper left quadrant, such as in the 5-3-2 formation uh, that they used in the first two games of the African Cup. So uh, our candidate, uh, Umar Kamara here, did start there once as a left winger. Um, uh, in uh, uh, game three, it was right winger Theum uh, appearing as a left forward. So uh, very unsettled in the early African Cup qualifying, but towards the end of uh, that period, uh, the forward Tanji started to appear more, and then uh, Koita arrived in November to play both games there. So it's too early to say Koita would be the starter, uh, but others who play there, like Tanji and Theum, um, are playing out of position when they appear there, and both of them also play in other positions. So uh, kind of like central defense and central midfield, very hard to predict uh, who it's going to be. And it could be uh, several players as in those positions. Uh, moving over to the right wing, where we, we had uh, in the previous um, cup uh, a definite candidate in Mamadou Nias and um, a possible candidate in Idrissa Theum. And um, that was all we had for right wingers. So uh, we did nominate Idrissa Theum as a potential starter there. Um, Mamadou Nias uh, was not selected for the squad. So let's move into the uh, updates. Yes, Mamadou Nias not selected for the squad. Excuse me. Uh, I had to cough and turn off the sound. Uh, Mamadou Mias um, uh, was not selected for the squad. I think that's the third time I've said that now. That was a shock because uh, we did have him as a definite candidate. He had seen the fixture uh, prior to that cup. He had played in eight of their ten games uh, prior to the 2021 African Cup. And uh, since that time, he has started uh, one game and... Um, subbed in for three, but not selected for 13 others, including the last six matches. So um, far from being the uh, starter or from being the definite candidate, we thought he was going to be. He now moves down to possible, but unlikely, um, because he is uh, kind of still around. Uh, the candidate we had as possible, Idrissa Theum, was selected for the Cup. He subbed into game one and then gained a starting position for the following two games. And um, he has since started 10 of their 17 games, as well as subbing in for two, and uh, was not selected for five matches, though, uh, including the last three matches. So um, he would have been a probably a likely candidate, but missing the last three matches, um, and in fact, miss, uh, not selected for the last five of seven matches, uh, uh, forces us to put him uh, down to the possible level where he was going into the last cup. So uh, really not many um, good candidates at the left wing or right wing position here. Let's uh, uh, review the list and then summarize the position. So we have Idrissa Theum as a possible candidate and Mamadou Nias down to possible but unlikely. And honestly, it seems to be a different player every game uh, in the right wing position with some of the players that we saw on the left uh, playing here too, uh, especially uh, Suid and Theum. 
uh, showing up here. But uh, central midfielders Mahmoud and the forward uh, Kamara, um, they do seem to uh, favor the right side a bit and have recently been filling the spot. But once again here, we find it very difficult uh, to make a prediction because no one has really uh, played the spot enough for us to think that they're going to be a starter there. Okay, before we move on to forwards, we have one um, uh, kind of general midfielder to talk about. Uh, we had him coming in as a new candidate uh, in the previous Cup. So that was uh, when the uh, rosters were published, uh, his name showed up, and that is uh, Bayat Lecueri. Uh, Bayat Lecueri, and he was selected for the squad. Um, uh, he appeared only in game three as a substitute. Um, so a surprise selection there, but he uh, has not appeared for the team since then. And so uh, we remove him from the list. So that was a kind of a, a short story there. Now we can move on to the forward line and we begin with attacking midfielders and starting with uh, the list we had in the previous cup. So we had no definite or likely candidate, but a possible candidate uh, or three possible candidates, Ahmed Besam sometimes just known as Besam, um, Yasin el Weli, and uh, Hassan Mokhtar Ali Day. Uh, those three candidates, and we didn't have any more. We had one seemingly off the squad who uh, did not reappear. So let's take a look at uh, these candidates. Well, the fact is none of them... Um, no, that's not true. Uh, just uh, among the three of them, uh, Bessem was selected. Uh, he was subbed into game one at halftime and then gained a starting position for the next two games there. Um, however, since that time, he has only appeared in the African Nations Championship games, not with the senior team. So um, that was in January 2023. Uh, but honestly, it, uh, there's not a lot of carryover from the uh, from that team to the to the senior team. So we're going to say possible but unlikely uh, for Bessem there. Um, the next candidate, Yasin El Weli, was not selected for the squad, but he did return after a two-year absence right at the end in November 2023, and uh, didn't start any games or even sub in. But he was on the bench for both, so kind of uh, um, um, coming back into the squad is uh, El Welly, and actually his name should be in grey because he's never been in a tournament, and uh, so he remains a possible candidate going into this cup, uh, just as he did in the last cup. And the third candidate was Hassan Mokhtar Ali Day, and uh, he was not selected for the squad either, but he also returned um, uh, he was out with an injury. I don't think he was out with an injury for the Cup, but he was out with an injury and returned in March 2023 and started one of their remaining 10 games, uh, subbing in for two and on the bench for one, uh, but missing the last four matches. So I think we're actually going to move him to uh, below El Welly there. Uh, that is uh, Hassan Mokhtar al -E Day. His name is in black because, uh, um, oh, he's already where he should be, uh, because he was in the 2019 African Cup, al -E Day. And finally, we have one player to add. That is Sida Buna Amar, uh, a new candidate coming in. He is also at the uh, possible level, and he got his first uh, cap, uh, got his first caps actually in the African Nations Cup in January 2023, um, but was carried over and started three of their remaining 11 games, uh, subbing in for three matches, including the last two matches there, and not selected for five. So uh, we have Sida Buna Amar as a possible candidate. Okay, those uh, are the attacking midfielders, and by that we kind of mean central attacking midfielders. So let's review the list. We have Yasin El Wali, Hassan Mokhtar Ali Day, and Sida Buna Amar, all at the possible level. And then uh, Besam or Besam Ahmed at the uh, possible but unlikely level. So 
Uh, actually, a formation that involved a central attacking midfielder has only been used once in their major games over this period, and it was the central midfielder um, uh, Moussin, Bada Moussin, who uh, filled it. So uh, none of these players are actually playing as a central attacking midfielders. Um, but they have played in other positions, uh, as we see the Mauritania players kind of starting all over the pitch. And a lot of them are actually forwards, which we move on to next. So let's see what we had back in the previous cup. Two definite candidates in Adama Ba and uh, Himea Tan Tanji. And two likely candidates in Abubakar Kamara. And uh, this is where we had Mohamed Sued uh in the previous cup but we have since moved him to uh right midfield and still have him as a uh as a likely candidate but we'll remove him from the list of forwards here and uh back in the previous cup we had nominated both adama bar and hamea tanji as starters and abubakar kamara as a, a a likely starter uh, or a possible starter and um, the reason we had so many was because we thought that they might be playing in other positions. And you'll see as we go through this that uh, uh, that basically was the case. So let's uh, follow up on the players here. Adama Barr, our definite candidate. And uh, he was selected for the cup, but he wasn't the starter. We thought he was going to be just subbed into games one and three there. And... Um, uh, has not appeared for the national team since the 2021 African Cup. So uh, kind of making a, a quick exit from the team here, Adama Barr, uh, we will put him as a seemingly off-the-squad player, which gives him kind of a slim possibility of coming back. And next on the list, we had another definite candidate in Hamaya Tanji, and he was selected for the squad, but also was not the starter that we thought. Appeared only in game two there, and uh, has since started eight of their 17 games, uh, subbed in for two and on the bench for four, so just three matches that he wasn't selected for, and um, um, Hamaya Tanji is now a likely candidate uh, but I should say these players shift around positions a lot. So it's uh, when we say likely, that is a likely starter somewhere on the field, uh, perhaps as a left winger or left attacking midfielder uh, for Tanji. Uh, the two likely candidates, the first one, Abubakar Kamara, uh, was selected for the squad and he started games one and two, but was subbed out of game two at halftime and lost his starting position and uh, not even on the bench there for game three. Uh, so Abubakar Kamara has started 10 of their 17 games over the past um, two years, uh, subbed in for one, but not selected for six matches, including the last three matches. So uh, we have to put him at the possible level, uh, which is, um, yes, that's uh, uh, where we have him there. I think we had him as likely before, so that was, uh, uh, I put him in the wrong spot there. And uh, Mohamed Sued, the other candidate uh, we've dealt with, they actually did have a couple of more candidates that I should have mentioned. Uh, one that was seemingly off the squad, um, and that was uh, Suleiman Ann, and um, two that were new to the squad. That was um, uh, pa uh, Pape Ibnu Ba and uh, Suleiman Dukeri. Uh, both of those players added to the list uh, at the uh, when when the squads were published. So. Um, we should also update them too. Actually, uh, Suleiman Ba kind of remains in the picture, uh, even though he had seemed to be off the squad. He wasn't selected for the cup, but he did return after a more than three-year absence in September 2022 and started three of their remaining nine games. He was subbed in for two and on the bench for uh, one. Uh, so just three matches that he wasn't selected for since his return, three of the nine matches. So Suleiman Ann kind of uh, back in the picture here, and uh, he played as a left midfielder uh, in one of his starts. I believe he was a forward 
uh, in one or maybe two of the others, but Suleiman um, um, moves from seemingly off the squad in the last cup to a possible candidate here. Uh, let's look at the new candidates, Ibnu, uh, Pape Ibnu Ba, and um, uh, he was selected for the cup. He started and finished games one and three and uh, subbed into game two at halftime. So he was used quite a bit and he has started nine of their 17 games since. Subbed in for six and the only match he missed was one that he was injured for. Um, and so we have him as a definite candidate. Uh, we'll change his name to a black script because he uh, has now been through a tournament and we put him as a definite candidate. But a bit of a warning there uh, that he doesn't start as much as he seems to because a lot of his starts have been in friendlies rather than in uh, kind of more important qualifying games. So um, we're going to see that um, uh, even though he's the only definite candidate here, he's, he doesn't actually play or he doesn't actually start more than some of the other candidates that we have. Uh, the other player who was new to the list was Suleiman Dukera, and um, uh, he was selected also, uh, so we'll change his name to uh, Black Script, and um, uh, appeared only in game one as a substitute, uh, Suleiman Dukera, and since then he's only started one of their 17 games, but he was subbed in for four and on the bench for four. Uh, however, he was not selected for eight matches, including the last four. So uh, Suleiman Dakara we put at the portable level, but uh, missing the last four matches uh, almost makes him uh, an unlikely candidate. Uh, okay, so those are the candidates. Let's uh, just go through. Hang on, i got to see if we have any new ones. We don't. Let's go through and summarize the list and then talk about the position. So uh, we have a def definite candidate in uh, Pape Ibn Ba, a likely candidate in Himea Tanji, three possible candidates, Abu Bakar uh, Kamara, Suleiman uh, Ane, and Suleimane uh, Dukara, and then uh, a player seemingly off the squad, Adama Ba, with a slim chance of returning. So all a bit confusing there. And it really is uh, in the position. Even in the cup, it was uh, two forwards in the first game, one in the second game, then three forwards in the uh, third game of the cup. And it has been equally changeable since. So very hard to summarize here. Um, both Pape Ba and Camara had two starts over their major games. That's as many as anyone had, really. Um, Oh, sorry, I should say uh, Pape, Ba, and Camara had two starts in the cup. Uh, there were more uh, over the next uh, uh, games, over the over the next two years. Uh, Camara, uh, um, Abu Bakar Camara, started quite consistently in African Cup qualifying, but um, in various positions as a right attacking midfielder, a right forward, or even as a centre forward. And uh, our definite candidate, Pape, Pape Ibn Ba was just one of several candidates who started uh, in the forward line uh, with Tanji, right wing of Theum, and even central midfielder Mahmoud uh, appearing uh, in the forward line. But it was Tanji in the first two games, uh, but flanked by three different players. So um, Camaro would seem the most likely. Uh, except that he wasn't called up for the last three matches. And as I said, Pa is uh, no more likely than other players like Tanji, uh, who actually, I got to say, two, those two probably top the list at this point. But, um, you know, um, um, uh, Ba has started less, both of them have started less than half of the major games. So it's really... Uh, all over the place up here. And that does bring us to the end of our look at the candidates. And we move on to uh, section three of the um, media cast, which begins with a spotlight review of the uh, starter predictions that we have. So we're going to start with manager uh, Amir Abdu. And I am just going to put him as a uh, likely um, 
uh, candidate, and I'll tell you why briefly. Uh, basically, a lot of the positions are in chaos uh, as the central defense, central midfielder, right winger, and forwards. We really, and left wing too, have no idea uh, who's going to start. It's been out of position players and stuff like that. And it upsets uh, players, it upsets fans when things are as indecided, undecided as they are. Uh, in that position, and we just think that might endanger uh, the manager's chances. It would be very late in the game uh, to replace him at this point, and frankly, it's not that different than it looked going into uh, the previous cup, where we uh, our predictions were were uh, very spotty uh, because it was hard to tell, and uh, uh, so he may uh, uh, make it through the cup again. A bit late to change. Anyway, uh, goalkeeper is one position that has been decided. Uh, quite firmly, and that is newcomer Babacar Nias, uh, who we're, we're sure will be the starter. Central defense, I uh, said, was a bit chaotic, but we have uh, two candidates who we think, um, not definitely, but could well be among the starters. That's Hatan Hubeib and uh, newcomer Nu Mohammed Al Abd. Um, uh, we put uh, them in blue just as a likely rather than a confident guess. Uh, at left back, we are confident that Ali uh, Abid will start. Uh, he may start as a left back as he's coded, but he may also start um, as a left defender, especially if they use a three-man back line. Uh, we do think for two reasons, Kadim Dior uh, is challenging his uh, starting position, Abid's starting position a little bit, or if Abid moves into the central defense, then uh, Kadim Dior uh, in both cases has a, has a decent chance of being a starter. Uh, at right back position, there is no doubt about it. Um, newcomer Ibrahima Keita uh, came in for the position and seized it by the horns. Uh, central midfield, though, also a bit chaotic. Um, Mo Boda Musin and uh, Guesama Fofana. Fofana seem like uh, likely uh, starters there, but uh, uh, we don't say that with any great confidence because a lot of players have come in and out. Uh, we do have one player coded as a right midfielder. It's Muhammad Suid. Um, and we think he is a possible starter, though probably not as a right midfielder, uh, or possibly, but uh, equally likely as a left winger or a right winger, even a forward, he kind of pops up all over the field. Uh, left wing and right wing is really where we have uh, candidates that don't seem like they're going to start. The players coded for those positions. So we're not going to put anyone in those uh, slots. Uh, the same is true for central attacking midfield, so we're going to leave those blank. However, we do have three forwards who we think um, have a chance of popping up uh, as starters, not necessarily as forwards. The forward position itself is actually quite uncertain with uh, uh, all sorts of players being tried out. So uh, it's... it's um, almost more likely that these players would uh, pop up somewhere else. Anyway, the candidates are uh, Pape Ibn Uba and uh, Hernaya Tanji and Abubakar Kamara. We think all three of those have a chance of being a starter. Okay, a bit chaotic with uh, Mauritania, but that is the spotlight review. And uh, we move on to the second part of our conclusion where we preview part two uh, of the uh, podcast. So when the uh, final squad rosters come out, uh, we will take a look at them and go through our list again and see uh, which ones made it and which ones didn't. Again, in the previous cup, we were uh, far less accurate for Mauritania uh, than we hoped to be or than we were for other teams. But um, um, we'll have to see if it's the same this time. So we're expecting some surprises there. Uh, also, we'll give an update on injuries uh, for the Cup, so um, we'll be closer to the Cup then, so we'll have a bit more information about which injuries seem to be um, uh, seem to be threatening the players' uh, chances of being in the Cup. Okay, that is all we have for Part 1 of this media cast, so we hope you join us for Part 2. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. 
It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. We would like to thank Pixabay and Alexei Ivanov of Mapa Music for the wonderful background music accompanying this media cast.